All right, guys, so if you caught my last video, I briefly discussed what the job of the lightning arrester uh, did. And if you didn't catch that video, you can go ahead and catch it in the card above right here. But the lightning arrester's job is basically to act as a surge protector or a fuse, if you would. Now, <laughs> what happens is, um, given the name lightning arrester, you would think that this job, the job of this unit is to protect you from a lightning strike. Now, uh, as I mentioned before in my previous video, there is nothing on earth that is going to protect your equipment from a direct lightning strike, right? So uh, lightning is going to come, it's going to hit your either your antenna or your antenna mask, and it's going to travel down the uh, LMR cabling or your coaxial cabling and into your hotspot unit, basically frying it, right? So, um, as I said, there was nothing on earth that is going to stop that from happening, okay? even if you do have proper grounding. Now, when it comes to a lightning strike happening many miles away or maybe a mile or two away, what's going to happen is electricity is going to float in the air and it's going to collect through your antenna, which is basically a wire, and through your antenna cabling, which is another wire, and into your miner. The job of the lightning arrester is to detect that electricity or static electricity, what have you, and detect it and provide a cutoff here so that any type of free-floating electricity doesn't damage your equipment. Now, with regards to uh, lightning arrester quality, now they do sell uh, lightning arresters that are very expensive that uh, will not take your decibel levels down as much as these cheaper or more inferior ones do. Now those ones are a lot more expensive and uh, they can get up all the way around to a thousand dollars. Now the ones you see on Amazon and eBay, uh, they're more of the cheaper quality and they still perform the same function but with the degre degradation of a few decibels or a few points off your decibel capabilities. So it's very important that you find out if you need this or not and if you don't, I do not suggest you incorporate it if you plan on uh, reaping the most rewards from your uh, antenna and your miner. All right, so one thing I forgot to note that um, if you are planning on putting your um, antenna up inside your attic, you do not need to install a lightning arrester if your antenna produced uh, a no signal sound. Now, that's simply for the fact that uh, it's covered and shielded underneath the housing of the roof and uh, the house in itself is already grounded. But uh, if you are planning on putting this on the exterior of your home, say on the outside of your roof or the side of your roof or out in your yard, then you are going to require this if your <clears throat> antenna did not produce a sound. All right, guys, so this is pretty much going to be a straightforward diagnostic. Now, everything you see here regarding to hotspot mining was purchased off of eBay from a retailer by the name of C4Sales.net. Now, I have no affiliation with C4Sales.net. They were a real retailer online that deals specifically in helium mining, and they happen to have uh, what I considered a quality product, which was the 9 dBi antenna that I was looking for. The... Uh, LMR 400 cabling with the proper connections as well as the lightning arrester. Now this was all one entire package which roughly cost me around somewhere around 280 to 300 dollars. Now we're going to go ahead and test this uh, antenna to see if it requires or is necessary to install the lightning arrester. Now again uh, when you install the lightning arrester that is going to decrease the amount of radio frequency produced by your antenna or the power of the antenna. Uh, when it pushes out your signal so if we don't need it we don't want to install it so what we're going to need here today is a digital multimeter and i have one here set in front of me and we're going to go ahead and set this to the little diode uh, image right here which is going to give us or produce a sound when we tap the two connections together just like that okay so what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and we're going to tap one of our leads to the exterior body of the fastener 
and we're going to put the other side to the prong on the inside of the antenna and if a sound is produced then that is going to indicate that we do not need a lightning arrestor now if we do that and there is no sound produced then that it means that you are required to have a lightning arrestor and I'll elaborate on that a little bit further in a minute so we're going to move the remove the dust cap and we're going to place one of our leads onto the fastener part the part that spins and tightens up the uh, connector and polarity doesn't matter so we're just going to go ahead and tap one in on here and we're going to look inside here and you're going to find the little metal pin in there okay we're going to go ahead and tap that and there we go so with that tone that indicates to me that this 9 db antenna is already grounded and we do not need a lightning arrestor for this antenna now if you happen to do the same and you do receive a non-tone now i intentionally have this set off to the side here and um, onto this portion of the uh, antenna and you tap the inside and you do not receive a signal or a tone then that means you are required to install the lightning arrestor if you want to dissipate any type of uh, uh, electricity discharge that builds up within the antenna okay let's go ahead and put this down for a second and i'll elaborate a little bit further all right guys so we're back in my room back at my pc workstation now i kind of drew a diagram to further elaborate on some of the things i spoke about during our testing so what i did was created this word diagram for you to view to kind of give you a visual representation of what is actually happening. So I'm going to go ahead and switch over to my screen share so you can see the diagram for yourself. All right, so breaking down this diagram, you can see that we have two types of antennas. We have type one, which is our open circuit antenna, and we have type two, which is our shorted circuit antenna. Now, when we place uh, these types of antennas on our digital multimeter, the type one open circuit antenna is not going to produce a tone. Now the type 2, because it's shorted, it is going to produce a tone. And this is the uh, type of antenna that I previously demonstrated. In order for us to understand why we need or don't need an arrestor, we first need to understand our antenna and how it operates. Now an antenna, like most electrical systems, is basically two wires. We have a positive and we have a negative. In RF, we have our hot wire and we have our ground. Now within our uh, antenna body, we have a conductive rod. Now we're gonna call this our positive wire. Our positive wire or conductive rod travels the complete length of the tube and has an unobstructed path straight to our hotspot miner. Additionally, we also have our ground wire. Our ground wire, which is our negative wire on the antenna, has an unobstructed path straight to our hotspot minor connector or the outside body of the connector now it's important to note that the minor itself is already grounded via our wall adapter plug now with our minor grounded it is providing us a ground on the outside body or this outside negative wire here to our antenna but what about the inside wire the inside wire still stays a free and direct path into our miner and we need to find a way to break this connection or protect this connection when exposed to an electronic or electrical discharge either via a lightning strike or free floating current static electricity within the air that is when our arrestor comes into play with our arrestor we place this in the middle and now the path of the hot wire has to travel through our arrestor into the connector and out through the bottom. The outside of the arrestor is connected to ground and this basically acts as a switch. When the arrestor detects a certain amount of electrical current traveling through its path, it is going to flip that switch and send that current down to earth. 
So moving over to our type two or our shorted circuit antenna, is we basically have the same antenna setup going on, except for the fact that our two wires are positive hot wire and our negative ground wire are tied together within the uh, body of the antenna housing as demonstrated here. This would be your hot wire, this would be your ground wire, and they conjoin and bring us directly to ground on both our exterior body connector and our interior pin connector. This is typically found in your uh, dipoles and to give you an example would be your Yegi antennas. With all that said, the job of the arrestor is basically giving us the option of protection in our time of need. So it's basically doing this job only when we have an electric static discharge that the arrestor can identify. Now before I end this video, I want to kind of point out that uh, there are many, uh, there are other types of lightning arrestors and people don't really stop and think about what about after your hotspot miner? What about your computer equipment, your router, your, your monitor, and everything else that's connected to your PC? Now, they do make um, lightning arresters for uh, the back end of this, your RJ45 connection. Let's go ahead and take a look at one of those before we end this video. So right here, I have a RJ45 adapter. It's an Ethernet surge protector. And basically, our internet connection would come in through here and go out to our miner, providing us protection on the back end of our um, hotspot miner. Got to remember, the miner is just one aspect of a larger piece of equipment, and we want to make sure all of that is protected. And adding this would be a good idea uh, if you want to protect uh, your home computer equipment from any type of electrostatic discharge. Now, they do sell one in this fashion, uh, which you can put into place and just uh, ground it via a grounding block. But um, I would prefer my method of choice would be to use a PO injector with surge protection. You get an all-in-one cost solution and you're not having uh, multiple devices in daisy chained. So to me this would be a better solution than going this route since if you're providing power over neither ethernet you already need this. Alright guys so that's going to bring this segment to a close. Hopefully I uh, answered some of the questions and demystified some of the things behind the lighting arrestor and uh, answered your question whether or not if you need it or don't need a lighting arrestor in your hotspot mining system. Now please take into account all the things that I've said here. Um, there is a lot of good information and uh, when you're building out your system make sure you're always protected and uh, not just the miner but the, the things that are after the miner such as your expensive monitor and your uh, higher performance uh, router and uh, your overall your computer system. So with that said guys, I'm the chemist on crypto and crypto mining. Please like, subscribe and share and uh, if you have any questions please post them up in the uh, comments below. I'll be more than happy to help you out and uh, please check out the descriptions too. I have a lot of good information and links uh, for you to purchase products and uh, get your mining rig all set up and ready to go. And that's it. I'll see you on the next one.